Are you ready to be the best that you can be? Join hybrid business coach and consultant Charity Brown and her guest as they give you behind the scenes access to the insider tips and tricks that will help you take your business to the next level. Charity has an extraordinary approach to boosting businesses to break out of their modes, influence their industries, and become leaders of their packs. And she's ready to pass this inspiring knowledge on to you today. Learn how to change your game and build your business into what you've always dreamed of, right here on the Create Clarity with Charity podcast. Hello and welcome to the Create Clarity with Charity podcast. Today I have an amazing and beautiful guest, Ms. Mahima with the Mahima Mindset. Hi, Mahima. Hi, gorgeous angel. Thank you for having me here. I'm so excited. <laughs> Yay! I'm so excited for my audience to hear about all your amazing tools, your your great programs, and um, all the amazing things that you do for others. It's it's really really an honor to have you here. So you know, this podcast is about really talking about that evolutionary entrepreneur, not necessarily all about your business, but really about who you are and how you became like that kind of uh, heart centered leader. So let's start with um, where you're at. Oh, where am I at? I'm in Switzerland right <laughs> now. Um, I am um, enjoying learning new things every day. I'm excited about um, the, the new students that are coming on our campus all of the time of evolving our message, reaching more people, um, lots of exciting things happening right now. So yeah, keeping keeping it uh, keeping it busy, but not too busy. Like okay, my whole life is about work. I think okay. it should work and it should be wonderful. But I think you should also chill and you know know how to shut it off. Seriously, <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> totally. And especially when you're doing kind of like service work, like you do coaching and helping people transform their lives. You know, we really have to be like in that like really ultimate top performance of ourself, right. To be able to give back Absolutely. like that. So, yes. um, you've done so much amazing work throughout your years and found your guru and had several businesses. And I know my audience would love to hear about your entrepreneurial journey because it was really enlightening. Yes. So I became clear about, um, being an entrepreneur when I was 23 years old and, um, what had happened uh, before that is that I'd been married. I met a guy when I was 18. We married when I was 21 and we divorced when I was 22. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> and, and, uh, and after, because the marriage showed me how messed up I was mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Mm. Like I had no clue that I was so messy until I got into that relationship and saw all of my demons, shadows coming up and just, um, so even though we had a beautiful house with a swimming pool, a jacuzzi, I had freedom, I could do my artwork, I could um, do whatever I wanted all day. Um, I, I, I had a, what like people would dream like, oh my God, she has the life, right? Yeah. And my family who come from not that, not, um, you know, uh, luxury and, and, and all of that. There's more poverty, more lack, right? They all thought, oh my God, she has hit the jackpot, mm -hmm. you know, being with this um, um, guy. Mm -hmm. But what they didn't know is that we were miserable together. We were fighting all the time. We were, um, I couldn't be happy in any relationship. It wouldn't have mattered, you know, which, which man this mm -hmm. was. Right. Um, because I was insecure. I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what I wanted. I was messed up from sexual abuse in my childhood. I was messed up from physical abuse when I was younger as well. Um, I was messed up from the poverty. So there's no relationship uh, that would have, you know, made me uh, happy because I wasn't happy. Yeah. I didn't know how to be happy. I didn't know how to be grateful. I didn't know how to be centered, grounded, positive. And I didn't know that I didn't know all of that. Yeah. <laughs> Is this making sense, Jared? Yes, I've I been there. I feel yeah. I <laughs> right. And it all became very clear to me when we separated and chance, uh, serendipity, a bold decision mm -hmm. took me to India. 
and I was um, not looking for enlightenment. I was not searching for meditation. I didn't even know what meditation was. It was the furthest thing that I could ever imagine being involved in and getting involved in. And in my first ever meditation, I had a very transforming experience that literally, literally blew my mind mm -hmm. wide open and my heart. And I felt a stillness, a peace, a joy, ecstasy, bliss that I had never felt in my adult life consciously. Mm. I think we all feel these things. We drift in and out because it's our true nature. It's who we are inside. But I'd never had that experience of just sitting there having felt angry, having felt confused, having felt shaky, having felt terrible, to just shifting through meditation into this other alternate reality of self. Yeah. where I felt peaceful, I felt powerful, I felt loving, I felt free. So mm -hmm. I, s I thought, what has happened to me? What is this? What is this, this insane feeling? How can this happen? Mm -hmm. And that was it. I was hooked. I was hooked onto meditation. I started immediately meditating for two hours in the morning and two hours in the evening, just yeah. off of that one experience. So needless to say, I found my calling, I found something that just felt, I guess it's like if someone just finds themselves, right? Yeah. People can find it in music, they can find it in dance, you can find it as, I'm an actor, you can find, like, I found meditation and it was like home for me. It was natural, it was effortless, and it was easy. And every time I meditated, I would go into this very quiet place where I felt safe, I felt powerful, and I felt everything is okay. So I started just bugging out on this tribe of people and, and then that's when the idea popped into my head. Why go back to Zimbabwe and live a normal life? Why not, you know, live with this life? <laughs> like, yeah. why not be free and do whatever I want? <laughs> um, it was pretty radical because I was so young, 23 years old, my family, thought I'd gone nuts. They were like, when are you coming home? I was like, when I'm enlightened, when I'm enlightened. And they were like, what are you <laughs> talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so five years went by of me being eight months in India. I would leave for three months, go to New York, spend another six months in India, go to Canada, spend three or four months over there, go back to, Swiss, uh, to India. And th so that's how I just started. I just started being a global nomad and starting my entrepreneur journey with fashion, because that's what I'd done in Zimbabwe. I was a model and I'd worked in a designer shop, um, helping with designing the clothes. So I just naturally gravitated towards something I loved, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so I made yoga clothes um, with a friend of mine and we didn't make money from it, but we didn't lose money. So mm -hmm. we made back our investment. And then I quickly realized, mm, I'm not sure if this is something that is a long-term game for me, right? Mm -hmm. So then, so I, I started, you know, so then I went back to my deeper core. I'm an artist, let me, you know, I, I was always painting, so I started painting, and then I started doing that. I went with that, I even got an offer from a gallery in New York that they were willing to um, show my stuff if I could get like a green card organized in America. And it was at that moment that my teacher died in India. And then I had an epitome, uh, I had, I just knew I'm the teacher now. Mm -hmm. And I started teaching. I was 27 years old when that happened. And I, I, I'd learned so much. I was so free. Fear couldn't stop me. I felt unstoppable. And I felt I need to share this with people. People would always ask me like, what are you on? I'm like, nothing, man, this is life. Yeah, they thought I was high on drugs because I was <laughs> so high and radiant. They were like, what? You know, I want to have what she's having. I was like, this is just pure love, baby. This is just pure love. <laughs> that's beautiful because I think that's a lot about what um, the audience wants to know is like that moment of enlightenment. Like there is a shift from the contrast, right? From the, the, sh the dark side of kind of like lack of self-love, we're our worst critic, everyone's kind of in the low vibration, but then when you start doing certain things, it elevates your consciousness, right? Can you go into a little bit of that? 
Yes. So what I discovered is I'm not my thoughts, I'm not my feelings, and I'm not my body. I mean, I know this is, you know, sounds like if you don't know this experience, it's like, what is she talking about? Think about it like this. You came into this world with nothing, you're going to leave with nothing. Mm -hmm. So if you really think deeper, what's the meaning of all of this? Yeah, because even this body can be gone just like that, mm -hmm. right? So it looks like the body is a container for something else, a consciousness, an awareness, right? And we all know this, like there's been people in their body, there's something there, conscious, aware, and then boom, that leaves the body and the consciousness is gone and the body disappears back into the ground, right? Mm -hmm. So, so the, 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 when people start to do this work, you shift away from identifying with yourself as your name, your story, and rather the consciousness and the awareness, which is much more expansive, right? So I'm not my name, you know, and, and that's how we get into what is known as oneness consciousness, right? Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? It means that you and I, Charity, we're, we're the same. We're the same. We have different color skin. We have different stories. That's the superficial level that mm -hmm. appears to have some differences, yeah? Um, yeah, you're, yeah. you're American, I'm African, um, you could be Christian, I could, you know, have no religion, whatever. And it's like, that's, those are the differences that society chooses you to focus on. When you start doing this work, you start to focus on the deeper layers of self. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then you start asking beyond my name, beyond my money, beyond my education, beyond my story, who am I? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then through that self-inquiry and through meditation, you discover that you're the soul living in this human body for a temporary amount of time between birth and death. You don't know that time period. Mm -hmm. And so you start understanding that you are not your body, your mind and your thoughts and feelings. And this understanding allows you to start relating differently to yourself and to the world. Mm -hmm. You move away from victim mindset into empowered mindset. Yes, because if I stay as Mahima, then I'm Mahima that was sexually abused, Mahima that was beaten as a child, Mahima that has uh, limited. These are the, the places where you could say, well, how did you move away from that? Mm -hmm. By expanding who I was, that that's part of me, but it's not the whole part of me. Yay. And then when you find this part, which I call this the soul, your, 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 your life soul calling. Yes. Like your soul purpose, your soul calling. Like we're all here on a bigger level. Like all of us need to know that, right? That we're not just this, like you're saying, this vehicle to just run around earth with collecting things and degrees and money and people and all this identity stuff, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. exactly. It's not about what you be, what you have. It's about who you are right? Mm -hmm. What you experience in each waking moment, you have a choice. Yeah. And, and doing this work, doing this meditation work, I discovered that choice. Mm -hmm. Before that, I didn't feel I had a choice. I felt like when I was angry, it consumed me. Mm -hmm. And that's all I felt. And I felt stuck in that feeling. Um, and I felt like I, I don't even know how to be something else because the society doesn't teach us how to deal with our emotions. Mm -hmm. how to deal with our sexuality, how to deal with um, money, with important things. These are taboo subjects, money, sex, religion. Yeah. So the important things of life, because I think money is important. I think sex is important. I think, you know, spirituality is important, mm -hmm. you know, has all this taboo because people might start fighting, might feel uncomfortable. And, and so where do we really start to, you know, talk about on a different level about who are we and what's really going on inside of us, mm -hmm. right? So I love meditation because it's not therapy. It is not, it is not focus on the pain, focus on the pain, focus on the pain and talk about the pain. Mm -hmm. It is what else is there besides of the pain? We don't yes. deny the pain. We don't deny the suffering. We don't deny any of that. We just investigate. Mm -hmm. Is there more to me than this? 
Beautiful. Oh, you guys see, there is a way. And a lot of people say like, I just don't have that bigger vision. I don't have a calling. I don't, I'm so confused and lost inside of me. What do I do? Like, how do I find that? Like you find somebody who's found it and you allow them to show you how you can find it inside of yourself. That's the, that's the only way I know how this could go down. I, I didn't do this by myself. I had teachers that held that space for me, that questioned me, that challenged me, that taught me a new way of thinking. I want you to think of thinking as the core, um, let's say, producer of your reality. So if you think it, it makes you feel a certain way, it makes you act a certain way, right? So if I think, I'm, you know, I left school at 16, I'm not educated enough, I, my education is, you know, is, is going to hold me back. I need more education. I have to get more educations. I can't, I can't be successful with this level of education. There's nothing wrong with those thoughts, but those thoughts will create you a certain feeling inside of you and mm-hmm. then will allow you to act in a certain way, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But if you think education is not just about a piece of paper, it's not just about university, there's a wisdom that is beyond college education oh, yeah. it is yeah. now i'm not saying there's anything wrong with the college education i'm just saying there is a wisdom that is beyond that mm-hmm. you know at six you know i le- had to leave school at 16 be, uh, sorry home at 16 because my stepfather was starting to touch me inappropriately at home mm-hmm. and i knew that I had to get out of there before it you know he was he, he had already been doing that since I was 11 and he was getting more and more pushy. And with 16, I asked my mom to sign a piece of paper so I could leave home. Mm-hmm. And I was good at school. School was some pla- a place I loved. I thrived, my teachers loved me, but there was no way I could continue going to school because once I left home, my mom said, if you leave home, we're not gonna continue supporting your education. And I said, well, no problem. Then I'm gonna start working and doing my own thing. So when I had my enlightenment, I knew that I could do anything I set my heart and mind to. And that's what I teach people. The only thing holding you back is your belief systems. Yeah. So because I didn't think my lack of education was a problem, it wasn't. And therefore, I was able to create opportunities to create um, situations help, I could manifest help, I could manifest situations where I could keep saying yes to my true heart and my true calling. Mm -hmm. And that's how I have been able to create this seven figure uh, business that, you know, educates people on a PhD on how to be happy. Yeah. On a global scale. So if I can do it coming from poverty mindset, coming from trauma, coming from all of those things, I reprogram myself, not by myself, with help, but I had to do the work. Mm-hmm. Yes, Charity, we have to do the work, right? Yeah, we have I mean, to do the work. Yeah, yeah, the teachers are there just to give you the knowledge, and then you get the knowledge, and now it's up to you what you're going to do with that knowledge. Some people throw it away and pretend they didn't hear it. I've seen this. I've witnessed this in the personal growth space. And others take that knowledge and go, thank you so much, and they run with it. Mm-hmm. That was me. <laughs> That's key, yeah, I took that wisdom, man, and I ran. I ran with it. Yes, <laughs> seriously, I put it on fire and let it just evolve in you and expand exactly. and ripple across thousands of people. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And you know, it's like it's not a straight path to success and happiness. It is a decision. <laughs> you take a deep decision inside of your gut, inside of your heart, and then you just go for it. Yeah, you just go for it. I love what you're showing people there. (laughs) I know. I love your page. It's just radiating love and heart centered transformation. If you want it, Mahima is here. Like she has these great programs. I went to one of your masterminds, you know, like two days ago online and I was just dancing in my living room. Like, Hey, like so excited. Your energy just comes radiating through the screens, you know, and it's so turned up. And I just 
I really, I really value that because I was just like that. Like we get stuck in our BS, right? Our belief systems. It's all BS. It's all BS. And when you realize your belief system is BS, Mm -hmm. then you can Mm -hmm. change it and you can say, you know what? Actually, I don't really believe that anymore about myself or about anything. And like, come, come with a brand new slate. Like you can transform. You can literally transform your entire life by just changing the way you're thinking and not staying stuck in the past and the things that, you know, kind of usually mold us into who we are, but sometimes we need to ditch some of those things. 100% drop it like it's hot. Bye. Drop it like it's hot. Yeah. <laughs> <Seriously. laughs> <laughs> all day. Yeah. I, and I, it's I, all I about who you hang out with, Charity, right? I mean, that it's all about who you surround yourself with. Yes. Yeah. And yes. if you surround with yourself with people that say you can't, you're stupid, you're dumb, you, you know, like you won't make it, mm-hmm. then you believe that, you know, and believe it or not, I did hear that a lot when mm-hmm. I was growing up. Yeah. And the reason I heard that is because my parents heard that from their parents, mm-hmm. right? Brought up in that culture of, I call it a culture of hate. I don't know if you guys know apartheid, but apartheid is a culture of hate. So mm. I, I don't know how my parents, I, I would be dead already if I lived back in those days. Yeah. I would be because I'm, I'm that person. I just can't stand injustice. Yeah. So I would have been the, the girl they would have, you know, like I would have spoken out. Yeah. You know, they and, would have hung yeah, you by and, your toes, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, so my mom, my, my, you know, dad, my grandmother, they will have to repress those emotions, yeah. you know, um, in, externally. So mm-hmm. it erupted inside of the families as, yeah. as physical and um, mental and emotional abuse, right? Because that energy has to go somewhere. And if you're being repressed externally, and if externally it's very dangerous for you to express that, it tends to be expressed inside of the home, right? Yeah. So, um, so, so, so yes, it's, it's, it's like being able to say, my past doesn't get to define my future, but where do you build a new future? Mm-hmm. Lean in. Here's the hack. Okay. You build it in the power of the now. Yeah. yeah. You make a different choice now. So many people are, are looking towards something over there. And that's why they, they, shifts are never happening. Mm-hmm. You can only take a decision in this moment to lean into your positivity or to lean into your negativity. I say to people, you only ever have two choices, ever. You're only dealing with two choices. Yes. Either you're going to exhale and relax or you're going to and tense and get, you know, into whatever. That's all you're ever making as choices. I don't know if you've noticed that. Have you yeah, noticed no, that? I know breath work. I do a lot of breath work with the yeah. meditation and yoga. And that's literally mm-hmm. how I released a lot of that stress, those blocks, that, exactly. that negativity that was constantly hounding me, no matter how much inner work I was doing, it was because I wasn't moving the energy through with breath and moving physiologically moving it out of my body absolutely absolutely and that's a choice that's a decision to become aware in this moment what am i feeling so if you're listening to this right now just take a moment to reflect just take a moment to close your eyes and see how are you feeling right now yeah you're either feeling some form of relaxed opening yeah expansion Mm -hmm. or you're feeling closed contraction and small, right? Mm. And, and so becoming aware of where you are and then s- realizing I have a choice. I have a choice. I can choose, I can make a different choice. And that is the power of meditation. Meditation teaches you to make different choices because your choices are creating your life. Yeah. And of course the thoughts create the feelings, create the choices, right? So yeah. if you make a choice to say, Nobody, nobody gets to tell me what to think or feel. Nobody. Mm-hmm. I will read, you know, I will decide what I want to think and I will decide what I want to think, a uh, feel, right? Now is mm-hmm. a great time to practice that in humanity because with COVID and with the other stuff that's been going on, there's this fear, 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 feel, fear, feel, fear. That's what everyone yeah, wants you to feel. Based. Everything. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And everyone, if you're not feeling afraid, what's wrong with you? Right. And then this is what I have to say. You have one life that you know of. Now, maybe there's more lives and that's not in the scope of this discussion. What we know is you're in this body right now and you could leave this body any second. 
right? Yeah. So if you take ownership of your life, you take ownership of your thoughts and feelings, then you say, what do I want to feel right now? And you yeah. deserve to feel your birthright of peace, yes. of love, of joy, because that's what's inside of you. If you see a little baby, that's what they are. They're just a blank canvas of pure consciousness and love. We mm -hmm. condition through society, through teaching, through education, through so to think and act and feel a certain way. And now you're thinking, acting, and feeling that certain way, but you can you can reprogram if you don't like it. Yeah. You don't like it. It's yes. so true. And that's like something I had this in line. Mom, I've been taking a, an hour walk every day with my dog, doing some meditation, listening to my YouTube, listening to some sound bowls, clearing my head so I can expand my thinking instead of getting trapped in my own head. And I came home and I felt like I just need to write down all these negative things and recognize them and investigate them. And then on the other side of the page, write down all the positive things I think about myself, all the negative things and beliefs that I used to feel about myself. And then all the positive things I think, and it counteracted and literally all the horrible feelings I was feeling earlier, this pressure, this feeling of being stuck and maybe trying to avoid like being avoidant of my, of, you know, the negative past. Cause sometimes I feel like I deliberately ignore it. And so that might not be healthy either. And so I was like, I need to address it right now. I need to write it all out. And, and then on the flip side, write all the good stuff. So it counterbalances. So do you do like work like that in your programs? Absolutely. We do. I mean, I just gave a, a training before I came on this course where I was um, inviting the students to what do you let go of? Yeah. Let's speak it out. I let go of anger. I let go of small thinking. I let go of self-doubt. I let go of um, fear, right? So what do you let go of? This is the biggest secret to living in the power of the now. The most people can't live in the power of the now because they can't let go. Yeah, you're holding on to your um, misguided um, ideas that happiness is an external game mm -hmm. and that it happens through the acquiring of things, right? So if I have a man, if I have a child, if I have a job, if I have a, this, right? So that's what we've been told is happiness. Yeah. And it's not true. And we know this because mm -hmm. we have the child, we have the, we've had these things and they haven't even begun to scratch a surface. Yeah, it's momentary happiness. And then comes the deal that you the, the game that you have to play, right? So you have a child, I say you have a child, and then the shit starts. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you thought that was going to be happiness. What happened now? Exactly. No. And it comes with the flip side of the coin, right, Charity? The happiness and the not so happy. The same way with the business. I have a seven figure business. Yay. It comes with great things. I get to serve. I get to travel around the world. I get to live a high life. But then I get to deal with challenging um, teammates. I get to, you know, deal with things that go wrong and, and the deals that don't work out. And so there's always that flip side. So happiness can't be about what's happening externally mm -hmm. it needs so to be true i know you guys all hear this wisdom from this woman right now the audience is I just i'm sure they're glowing inside and ready to like flip their mindset too and start living the mahima freedom mindset tell us about freedom i love the acronym how you did that yesterday or day before yesterday how you thank you freedom. thank you so much you know freedom is my highest value it is the thing that i um you know when I had my awakening, it's the word that sort of just popped as this is what life is about. And I don't know if that's because of where I came from, you know, being, as I said, um, in, in, in places where freedom, even just the freedom of speech was not there, right? The freedom to go where you want, the freedom to sit on whichever bench that you want, go to whichever, people didn't have this freedom. They were, they were controlled to the point where you could only sit on this bench, you could only go to this restaurant, you could only go to that school, right? Mm -hmm. so, um, so for me, when I got, got my liberation, freedom became my motto. I want to do what I want, where I want, with who I want, as much as I want. Yeah, I want to create my life. And that's why I became an entrepreneur. That's essentially what was the driving force of my entrepreneurship. I, want, I don't want anyone telling me what to do. I don't want to have to go to one location somewhere when I know that I love to travel all over the world. Why would I give that up and stay stuck in one place, right? So yeah. it became very apparent to me that freedom was the golden ticket of life. Yeah, and not only freedom on an external 
way, but freedom internally, freedom from my demons, freedom from the shadow energy inside of me, freedom from the voice in my head of self-loathing, disrespecting, uh, you know, so freedom from negativity, freedom from being um, addicted to doing things that don't serve me. Yes, mm -hmm. so that's what freedom means for me. It means making better choices. So it comes back to this better choices thing. Yeah, freedom yeah. to be in inner peace. That's the first yeah. one for me. Like I have the right and I can choose. I can choose because let me tell you something, guys. When you learn about inner peace, you know it like you know it like you know it. And you know how you might say sadness is real? Well, inner peace is just as real. You know how you might say like anger is real? Deep ecstasy, bliss, joy from your soul is real. Mm -hmm. right? So when you learn this, this is what I call freedom. Because now I get to play in whichever space I want to play in. And I'm not in one dimension, which is negativity, which is what the society taught me before I discovered I have choices. Right? My mom always used to tell me things like, yeah, don't, don't laugh so much, don't laugh so much, you know. Um, life is tough, life is tough, you know. Like always, we were never allowed to be joyful, to, to celebrate. It was like, you don't know when that's going to be over, right? You're always told, like, be afraid of, 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 of success, essentially, right? Mm. Um, so freedom is your birthright. Yeah. You came into this world with nothing, you're going to leave with nothing. How do you play this game of life in the most elevated way by freeing yourself from from the negative belief systems that are unconsciously driving your thoughts feelings and decisions find people whether it's myself whether it's charity whether it's other people that it can help you dismantle those systems bring them into a conscious awareness, right? Like I did today on the class with the students. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what do you want to let go of? Become aware that you have that choice. You can say, I let go of this anger. It doesn't serve me. Mm -hmm. It doesn't serve me. And I choose. That doesn't anger. serve me. Nope, no, that doesn't serve me anymore. I used to right. beat my own ass all the time. Like that's not serving me anymore. I'm not beating myself up anymore. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and, then, and then we say, what do you receive? What do you want to receive? Yes, yeah. because a lot of us think that giving is the ultimate. I'm a giver. We're very proud of it, right? Well, I'm sorry. I'm here to say that receiving is more powerful mm. than giving. Ooh, disruption, disruption, right? <laughs> receiving the mm -hmm. truth that is inside of you, receiving stillness, receiving inner peace, receiving guidance from your soul, receiving the love that you were born with and that is who you are. So when you can receive all of that, now you're giving from your overflow. You're not giving out of desperation to be liked. Yeah, you're not scared to be your authentic self because people might not like you, right? You're not mm -hmm. over giving even though you don't have and then you're, you know, crumbling to the ground because, you know, you, you've given too much. Yeah. So receive, learn to yeah. be a receiver and then the giving comes out and it comes back tenfold. Yeah. And that's something I had to learn as women and mothers, you know, we're givers, givers, givers. We take care of everyone. We give everything we have to make sure our family and our kids are okay. And owning businesses, you're giving, 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 and it's a real art to learn. Okay. I'm ready to receive now. I'm yeah. open to receiving now. Okay. I'm going to stop blocking all my blessings by over giving and people pleasing and playing small and, you know, trying to be, you know, less than, we really deserve. I love that. And I'm saying give from your overflow. That's what I'm saying. Giving is awesome, but I'm going to give from my overflow. And when I can't I'll give from my overflow, I'm going to set my boundaries. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that I can continue that beauty of giving. But when I give in that way, I receive it back more. Right. So people are like, I gave, I gave, I gave like, yeah. Um, that's nice. I love giving <laughs> because it comes back to me. But if you can't receive, it doesn't feel like it's coming back because there's nobody open to go. Yes, yes, yeah. I've yeah. given now. I'm, I'm ready. Thank you. Thank you. Blessings. Thank you. Thank I, I receive. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And all the entrepreneurs, they, they're, <laughs> over, 
Yeah, that's it. That's a key. A lot of people that were never trained to receive, they got, oh, don't be greedy. Oh, don't put your hand out or shame you for like expecting something or not expecting, but even just taking something that's offered and, and just to be freely ready to receive. And in that heart space, a lot of entrepreneurs need to learn that, you know, because it is kind of like a dog eat dog world. And you're constantly trying to like people please and keep your clients happy or keep your customers happy, keep your staff happy happy, keep everyone happy. And you're giving all this freedom and this flexibility, and then you're just confined. And it's like, okay, but what about our inner freedom, our peace and receiving what is really most important. And that's what I also love about your programs. Cause you design your life with the core values and the fundamentals that will create that happiness that we all seek. Absolutely. Right? And you deserve to have it now. That's really part of my mission. Yes. Um, so Eckhart Tolle is one of the, you know, sort of godfathers of the now, right? Yeah, um, and and um, I think Deepak Chopra plays in that space. Um, my teacher in India, uh, Papaji, he was all about the power of the now. And mm -hmm. he is a, his guru was Ramana Maharishi. Some of you might know him, right? Mm -hmm. So what I love about the power of the now is that it removes the process there is some, you know, people believe that they're, they're, they're broken and they need to fix themselves. And that feeling, can you imagine? I'm, I'm broken. I need to fix myself. There's something wrong with me. There's something wrong. That's, that's a horrible place to be living from, right? So here's the hack. The part of you that's broken and that could have some improvements done to it is this size, okay? Like if you guys are just watching, you're not seeing the video, imagine a small... Uh, uh, something that fits on the tip of a needle, okay? That's the part of you that you could say, yeah, could improve on. Yeah, my personality, Mahima, the I, the me, the story. And mm -hmm. then there's the other part of you, which is your soul. And imagine, expand your, 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 your thought to take in the whole universe, not just planet Earth, beyond planet Earth, right? So there, that consciousness, that expanded self, Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a massive transformation. That's just really like, y you know, that's when I think the magic happens because we're universal beings, right? Like the exactly. energy we're like all from, we have, we have all this opportunity to expand ourselves, but yet we're all taught to just stay in our little box, you know, exactly. and to be, what would you fix? What would you fix when you understand that there, that you're that there's nothing to fix, right? So this feeling goes away immediately right as soon as you're back in your ego back on that needle point that small version of yourself suddenly there's something wrong with you you're not okay you've got to fix yourself you got to sort and imagine trying to fix yourself is like trying to fix um planet earth it's yeah. like us trying to like let's fix planet earth like no there's light and shade happy sad good, bad. We're never going to fix that. That's how it is. That's the nature of reality on planet Earth, right? Yeah. So if we understand reality, we accept it. And then when we understand ourselves, there, there is, you know, angry and sad Mahima, but then there's powerful and brilliant and awesome Mahima, right? Those are all existing within the sense of what they call duality, right? When you move to non-duality, you can be your angry self, and you can be your peaceful self. Doesn't matter. There's no, there's no judgment. There's no, I shouldn't be this. I shouldn't be that. There's just, hey, this is what's expressing itself right now. Mm -hmm. And you start to be able to choose. You start to be able to choose like, well, yeah, I'm kind of done with this anger now. It's, it felt nice for, you know, whatever, 45 minutes, but now I'm done with it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now I need my peace back. Okay. <laughs> And that's and good to mention back. that we do need to feel our feelings though and not to stuff that. Cause I was, I was, I was so good at stuffing that and playing the role. Like I'm not pissed. I'm not going to let anyone know, hold the poker face, you know, being the only one in the boardroom and, you know, being the only woman in the, in the, in the organization and having all the stress and not feeling understood. You know, you can't really say that you can't really process it. It's like really hard. So, you know, being able to like recognize those and actually, like you're saying, the duality, looking at, okay, how you're feeling. Okay. You're angry, you're mad, you're resentful, whatever. And then you're like, okay, but I'm not going to stay stuck there. I'm going to be, you know, smart and brilliant, appreciated and valued and respected. How about that version, right? Absolutely. And this is owning all of you and not staying in fragmentation, 
yeah. right? Which so many people do because they, they because the society tells us it's not okay to be angry. It's not okay to be sad, you know, and we've got to put on these faces. Like, isn't that the, what the whole business world has been about, right? You put on a mask and you got to, you know, you got to show up like this and pretend to feel this and pretend to feel that. You're not allowed to be authentic and mm -hmm. vulnerable. You're not allowed to say, I'm having a sensitive day today. It doesn't mean I can't do my job. Yeah. yeah. But if something has happened or is happening in your life, like let's say when I went through my divorce, it was very traumatic for me, right? Mm -hmm. And can we allow that to be part of brilliance as well? Like I'm going through a divorce right now but I'm so happy to be here at work and to give my brilliance and to give my shine into this project. But I am mm -hmm. vulnerable. I am going through my story, right? Where's the space for authentic expression of self, right? So this, 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 and the whole society has been taught to, you know, just smi smile like the Joneses, right? Everything's fine, everything, mm -hmm. how are you doing? <laughs> everything's fine, right? And we're dying inside. Um, that leads to burnout and yeah, burnout, depression, depression, anxiety, depression, and alcoholism, suicide, and addiction, mm -hmm. insomnia, all on the rise, all yeah. on the rise. Yeah. So something's definitely wrong. Our poker face ain't poker no more. Yeah. Right? Now we're, we're expressing it in our bodies. Now our bodies are saying, oh, hey, wait, you know, that will literally kill you if you continue that. So when is it important enough to say, I'm ready to stand in my power? I'm ready to claim me. You know, so do you have a preliminary program? Because a lot of people feel like asking for self-help, self-development is for, you know, it's just puffed air. We don't believe that, you know, affirmations and all this silly, silly, like, how do you get someone from that kind of resistance when they really need it? And it will, they would be like the best student to, to like biting and they're, when they're not ready. That, that is such a beautiful question because I feel like if there is anyone listening to this message right now, and you are still here listening to it after we've gone through all of this journey, it's because you're, there's something deeper inside of you that's saying yes. Mm -hmm. It's just saying yes, I want to know more, right? Yeah. This stuff is not about what's happening inside of your head. It's about being honest with yourself. Just be honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. If you feel like you're happy and everything's fine and that's true for you, then that's great. You don't need affirmations. You don't need any, just keep enjoying your life. Stay true to your, you know, your, your, your truth. Yeah. But if you know that this is all a mask and that inside there's disconnection, there's, there, there's more often sadness than happiness, yeah? More often frustration than joy, yeah? More often feeling confused and alone than feeling connected and expanded. Only you can be that honest with yourself and just mm -hmm. say, I deserve better. And it's, I'm not feeling what I deserve to be feeling. So I feel like everybody needs to make that choice for themselves, whether they're ready to work on themselves. But these strategies, these techniques, they work. Mm -hmm. They work. And they work um, rapidly. That's what I can tell you from my personal experience. I just told you a two-hour meditation changed my entire life. Of mm -hmm. course, I continued meditating. I told you for hours and hours, and that changed my life, right? But the first instant that I came to this, it was transformative. So find yeah. someone who can, in a short amount of time, show you something else. And once you know it, you are then the bearer of, what am I going to do with this juicy information? Yeah. Right? But in order to even get there, you need to say, is what I'm doing working? Mm -hmm. So let me talk about religion. I, my family was super duper duper religious. Okay? My grandmother, my mom, they used, to, they used to beat me up to go to, to church. Like mm -hmm. I used to I have someone pull my ear out of bed to go to church, right? So does that sound like a good, healthy place? I mean, violence? Right. Church, right? Uh, in poverty, poverty mindset, a lot of frustration, church. So there's nothing wrong with church, but I'm just saying to you, for me, it was a hindrance that I had to, I had to understand, okay, so what do I really feel? I'm full of fear. I'm full, of, I'm, I'm scared of God. I'm scared of the devil. I'm scared. I'm just scared, scared, scared. Mm -hmm. So when my teacher came into my life and showed me how to not feel fear anymore, I was like, whoa, whoa, I'm open to learn something more, mm -hmm. right? 
my family freaked out because they were like, she's not doing what we are doing, right? Yeah. But I had to be true to myself, you know? Yeah. I, I tried to commit suicide when I was 14 years old because I was so lost. So I just want to say for me, it didn't work. The, mm. the beatings and the church and the praying, it didn't work. It just got me more and more into darkness, right? Yeah. And so when I discovered meditation, it allowed me to see that I could heal myself and I could transform. And now what I love to do is I love to invite people to this question. How can we come together, you being Christian, someone else being Buddhist, someone else being Jewish, someone else being Muslim, someone else being um, uh, somewhere, and talk about a spirituality mm -hmm. that we can all agree with, yeah? yeah. How can yeah. we take this, because we've had religion in the world and look where it's led us, right? How can we take all these beautiful teachings from religion and come together and learn a new language that we can all agree with? It's love, darling, love. Right, <laughs> right. But we talk about doing this, but we are not doing it, Charity, right? Mm -hmm. It's just like for many people listening to this, they're like, yeah, that's nice, that's nice, but not for me, not for my child, not for my, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the sad part. So I would like to just encourage people to ask the question, how can we unite humanity? Because that's what excites me the most. In yeah. my tribe, there's people that come from all walks of life. They come from all colors and creeds, and they come from all religious beliefs and backgrounds. And we work spiritually on ourselves. Yes. And there's no conflict. Because in the true essence of love, then it's actually, it's actually the most gorgeous gift you can give yourself mm -hmm. to look over at your brother and sister, to look at someone's completely different than you, Mm -hmm. and see love, see yes. um, humanity, right? So that's the spirituality that, that excites me. It is disruptive because mm -hmm. it requires us to step away from what we've been taught is this is the traditional way, right? So we have people on our tribe that have been, you know, they're, they're, they're Indian. They've, they've been, you know, brought up as, as Hindus, right? Mm -hmm. And they have that conditioning. And with people that are Jewish people, they've been have that conditioning. And they mm -hmm. come in the tribe and they're willing to own what is wonderful about what they've been taught. And they're also willing to own how some of what they've been taught has screwed them up. Yeah. And that they have to dismantle those beliefs. For me, sexuality, religion, poof, it was messy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I really had to dismantle a lot of limiting beliefs there to be able to thrive sexually and evolve as a sexual being and a woman in my body and feel empowered. Um, so there's many things we, you know, you can see, I can, you know, 45 minutes is not enough time. Yeah, we could go on. And this is, I mean, it's so powerful. What you do is so powerful. It's literally life transforming, transformational, but it's the truth. And people, if you just be true to thyself, right? If we could just all be honest with ourselves and do what feels good and what we need to do, we would get on a better path, but we're really just so conformed. And so, so, you know, dialed into our belief systems that it's, it takes years sometimes, but, or it could happen in an instant. It, you decide, right? You decide when you're ready. Exactly. Exactly. And I would highly recommend that the people that are doing this change making work, not to go out trying to convince anything about anybody and any, convince anyone about anything. Mm -hmm. Be the change that the world needs. Yeah. That means sparkle, elevate, show how, show in your actions, the beauty. Yeah. Show the transformation, show the unity, show the love. And by itself, people will go, I don't know, know what she's doing, but I want to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's not about like, hey, trying to, you know, say, beat people up. What you're doing is wrong. What you're doing is right. Like, no, that's not what's going to change how we're showing up. It's mm -hmm. more about speaking about your own experience. Like I've spoken today about my own re experience with, you know, my, my religious family. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and, and how I took the opportunity when I met teachers that, that asked me, is there another way of thinking about this, right? Is there a way of thinking about, you can call it God, where there's zero fear, zero mm -hmm. fear, only love, 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 uh -huh. love, love, nothing else, no fear <laughs> at all. And that was for me huge. That was so huge. I remember when, when my, my teacher broke that wall down for me, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there's nothing to be afraid of. Yeah. 
Because yeah. a lot of us feel spiritually corrupt because we're trained. If we don't live this religion, we don't do mass. We don't pray five times a day. We don't, we eat meat or we eat pork or you do the, oh, then ever, all the fear factor driving everyone to follow God with fear instead of love. I think that was just like the complete wrong foundation. And that that's the main, one of the main problems and exactly why so many exactly. people have turned away too. And why they feel so lost because they can't have that connection with God until they have a connection with themselves and get real. And then it will be easier to connect exactly exactly wow. and 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 to celebrate you know others as i said unity so even the choices of the words we use you know what i mean because some people say well that's just my faith i you know i say this and i say that that's just my faith right but mm. aren't we ready to say okay great happy it's your faith but are there words that we could use so we can all feel included Mm -hmm. universal love does this, make, does this make sense <laughs> what i'm saying like if, so I say much. like if i say like hey jesus you know jesus is like that's this that's okay but if there's someone else in the room that's like well it's muhammad for me oh for me it's whatever jewish people say like it's for me that right then we already have that separation but so can we create can we co-create a new language that we can all vibe with Mm -hmm. and self-love yeah. self -love. if we all loved ourselves and our hearts were glowing we could love each other first we got to yeah. start with us right and exactly. a lot of us abandoned in us we ditched exactly. ourselves or because we couldn't be ourselves right exactly so i'm not saying there's anything wrong with whichever religion i'm just saying let's up level it yeah. let's up level it so we can unite yes. unity yes. unity and that spirituality can be on the table without pissing people off right without making someone angry and say you haven't understood something yeah mm -hmm. um you're not seeing me you're not seeing my truth like like how can we get away from that mm -hmm. and say, i see you i feel you i honor you i respect you i love you right only in my opinion when we see love and honor and respect ourselves yeah yay yeah. Ah! I know you guys out there are feeling so much better or you're going to call uh get online and click the link uh in the show notes and get get in one of Mahima's masterminds or one of her events uh life changing really love we're offering that free membership so if there's anyone oh, yeah. who's like oh my god this is exciting the link is going to take you to a free membership where you're going to be able to start my 21 day meditation challenge which even advanced meditators have been blown away it's 15 minutes a day you might say what can you do in 15 minutes trust me with the right guidance you can go very deep very quickly and for those of you who've struggled with meditation this is going to make it like what did i ever struggle with right um because there's so many misconceptions about meditation it's not about the technique or the strategy it doesn't mm -hmm. matter it's about yeah. the sincerity of your willingness to love yourself yeah because you're with yourself 24 7 seven days a week 365 days of the year you are there everywhere you go there's you right so this <laughs> relationship's got to rock yeah we got to get it sexy and juicy yes yeah. we've got to get it where we're peaceful with ourselves we love being with ourselves we respect ourselves and that's the work that's the work that many people don't want to do right because it's easier hard to just it's go, not easy i don't believe, <laughs> I don't believe in this as i don't it's easier to do that than yeah. to go what the fuck am I really feeling? Am I really happy? <laughs> right? <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, but then finding out what really would make you happy is the flip side. Someone said, well, you just get stuck with all the lack. And it's like, actually, I just need to think about what I really want. <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly and or what i already have i mean take you know that's even oh, the gratitude level. yeah for that's you know, oh you're yeah. so amazing i know my i i really hope this resonated and rippled through thousands of lives right now and they're all ready to in, embark on their new self-love journey and you know really creating their dream life and tapping into the amazing meditation tools and enlightenment that you're offering um all the way across the world in switzerland and um europe and hopefully Hopefully you'll come to the U.S. so I can meet you in person sometime. Is you're just you're just mind blowing. I'm going to keep showing up to all, all the stuff that I can possibly join when I have time. And thank you, beautiful lady, and thank you for the amazing <laughs> work that you're doing here, and you know, giving this platform for people like myself to share our message and our voice. And you know, I'm just thrilled that we've met. I can't wait to see where our relationship leads us more on the journey. Thank you so much, Charity. This has been extraordinary. I've loved every minute of it. Thank, thank you. And you. thanks for everyone listening for being here.
Thank yeah. You. Thank you everyone out there and have a wonderful day. And um, we will uh, bring you back hopefully sometime soon so we can chat okay. more because it's, I know there's so many more things that you could enlighten people on. Thanks again for being thank here. Thank you. Bye everyone. Bye.